Hey, what's up guys? I'm Sam. Today, we'll be creating this cool looking effect. Alright, so as you all know, this is the Savitar effect. And it's really cool looking. It's basically just a portal, but it looks so cool. So, without further ado, let's get started. By the way, the acting is intense. <laughs> so, we'll take our footage and drop it onto this icon to create a new composition. And here we have our raw footage. Now all you have to do is run and jump like that and you're good to go. And make sure that the camera stays still. Right, so the first step will be to roto ourselves out. Because you know, we have to place the portal behind us. So what we'll do is take the roto brush tool and make sure your comp resolution is set to full. And then double click on your footage and uh, we'll just select a frame maybe this one and we'll just roto it out so just hit the tilde key to maximize this panel and just start drawing a mask and to remove the unwanted area you can hit alt and you can just select and remove that area like that Alright, that looks fine. Just a rough roto will be enough for this effect because everything will be happening so quick. So we don't need to just perfect the roto, you know. No need for perfection. Okay. So we'll just hit page up to see if the mask stays where it is. So we'll just hit page up. And we need to do some adjustments. So we'll just adjust it. And we'll keep doing this for a few frames, say 5 or 6 frames. By the way, while I'm doing this, you can go ahead and continue watching that Game of Thrones episode if you want to. <laughs> Just kidding. Alright, I think that's fine for now. And let's just see what we have here. Alright, that looks fine. Now what we'll do is duplicate this footage and remove the roto brush effect from the bottom one so that we have our original footage back. And we can name this as original. And we can rename this as roto. And then we'll just solo this one for a moment. And we'll find the point where we have our masks, so this point. And then we'll hit Alt Begin Bracket to trim the footage. We can also do it by hand like that. And then we'll move ahead and hit Alt End Bracket to end it. So all we'll have is this. And maybe we can extend it from the back like that just a bit and then what we'll do is hit S for scale and then take the anchor point tool and set the anchor point somewhere around the middle of a body and then we'll set a keyframe for scale somewhere here and then move back and set it to maybe 40 so we'll have something like that and then we can enable the motion blur for the layer and the comp as well. So we'll have some motion blur. And maybe set the scale to 20. That's small. And then also we'll fade it in. So we'll just hit T for opacity. Make a keyframe. Bring the keyframe forward. A few frames and then set it to zero. And what we need to do is find an empty frame from the background so we'll just duplicate our footage and maybe rename it as PG background and then just find a point where we have a still background like that then we'll right click on the footage and go to time freeze frame so we have a freezed frame of the background and we'll just place it below everything so what we'll do now is trim our original layer from the point where our roto layer ends. So we'll just do it 
like that. And let's see what we have here. So that's what we get after doing the roto part. And now we can start focusing on the portal. So now what we'll do is create a new composition and name it as portal and hit OK. And then we'll create a new solid and we can name it as noise and hit OK. And then we'll go to effect, noise and grain, fractal noise. So we get a static noise texture. We can also animate it so we'll just go to evolution and hit alt click on the stopwatch for evolution and type time asterisk 500. So we'll have something like that. And then we can just start playing with the values. So we'll just set the fractal type to dynamic twist. So we'll have some twisty particles. We can set the complexity to 7 so that it has more detail. And then we can increase the contrast just a bit. And decrease the brightness just a touch. Like that. And then we'll go to transform and increase the scale. Maybe 150. And now we'll color correct this. So for that, I'll be using a third party plugin which is absolutely free from videocopilot.net. So you can download it from their website or you can download it from the description below. So the name of the plugin is Color Vibrance. So I'm just gonna use Vibrance. We see Color Vibrance. So we'll set the color to blue like that and then decrease the vibrance to maybe 0.35 and then decrease the preserve luminance too and increase the brightness like that and then increase the gamma so we have something like this then what we can do is take the pen tool and create a mask like that and then hit F and feather this layer maybe just set it to 400 so we have something like that and then what we'll do is add another effect which is vector blur so we'll go to effect blur and sharpen CC vector blur and this effect is the key effect of this final effect I hope you understand what I'm trying to say okay so what we'll do is set the amount to maybe 75 and then increase the ridge smoothness to maybe 0.5 and increase the map softness let me just set it to 50 so we'll get something like this it kind of looks cool. So now what we'll do is fade it in and fade it out. So I'm just gonna hit MM and set a keyframe for mask expansion. And we're gonna come to the first frame and set the expansion to negative 300. And we'll just move the keyframes closer like that. And after it's zero, we can set it to negative 300 again. So it fades in and then it fades out, just like that. Now what we're going to do next is create that S or the thunder in between the portal. So for that, what we're going to do is just duplicate this noise layer and hit M and delete the mask for now. I will just solo this for a moment. And what we can do is go to transform and increase the scale. Uh, maybe to 250 and what we're gonna do is take the pen tool again and create a mask like that so I'll just create a mask just like that So what I feel is that this mask looks too perfect. So I'm just gonna create a new mask. You know, it's all about experimenting and 
trying to get the look that you want. So it's not bad to do something again, you know. So I'm just gonna create a new mask, which is not that perfect looking. Now we can set the keyframes for the mask path. So hit M, set a keyframe, and just try to place it in the center. And then we'll go back and then set the mask how it was supposed to be. Just like that. Then copy this keyframe, edit, copy, and go ahead and edit, paste. So now we have something like this. Also make sure to feather it, so hit F, increase the feather, like that. Hit MM, also keyframe the mask expansion, move back, set it to zero, move ahead, increase it, just like that. Maybe just do some changes in the mask, then move ahead and set it to zero again. Oh, negative 25 negative 25 negative 30 maybe yes negative 30 and now let's see what we have here definitely better looking than before and maybe you can also adjust this mask so that it's not that perfect you know so let's just adjust it like that and now we can go ahead and, and make sure it's below, below the and drag it onto this composition. Make sure it's below the roto layer, like that. So right now you can see that the effect is not that semi-transparent. So what we need to do is go into the portal layer and set the and set the matte alpha to on for both of these layers. So we'll set it to on and maybe just decrease everything all right so that will get fixed and now what we can do is place it where we want it to be and uh, we'll just place it behind ourselves one more thing we can do is go to right click time time stretch and set the stretch factor to 60 so that will make the animation more fast and we can also have some color corrections so we'll just have this color correction adjustment layers in here and now let's see what we finally have here all right that's not bad the only thing i feel is the color of the portal and now we can adjust it from curves and uh, you know it's all in our hands all right that's it i hope you all enjoyed this tutorial i hope you all learned something new and as i always say it's all about playing with the values and adjusting things to get the look that you want all right that's it for now Thanks for watching and goodbye.